North America's largest shorebird, the long-billed curlew, migrates through Oklahoma every spring and summer by way of the Central Flyway. This flyway is not only a corridor for migratory birds, but it also connects conservation groups and agencies. That means that research done in North Dakota on nesting curlews can shed light on how the birds utilize Oklahoma's airspace and habitat. When we come back from this video, we will talk to Mark Cowery to learn more about the species of greatest conservation need in Oklahoma. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department has teamed with two leading conservation organizations to study the movements of a conspicuous shorebird to better recognize the bird's habitat use in southwestern North Dakota and elsewhere. We're here looking for long-billed curlews, the largest shorebird in North America, um, hoping to be able to find some nests and then therefore be able to trap adult birds and ideally outfit them with satellite or cellular transmitters that can give us data remotely. Biologists deployed five transmitters on long-billed curlews in North Dakota. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department is providing funding for this project, both through our state wildlife grants program, but also our non-game fund, uh, the Watchable Wildlife Tax Checkoff monies. Curlews are easily recognized by their size and their long curved bill. About the size of a, a sharp tail, but on stilts, and with that, that scythe-like bill that is really uh, well known, people recognize that quite a bit. Long-billed curlews are on the North Dakota Species of Conservation Priority List because their population has declined. They're also seen as an indicator species for the health of grasslands, um, but even agricultural lands. Um, and so mainly it's because of this population decline that has happened disproportionately in different areas that there's been interest in understanding more about the full annual cycle of long-billed curlews and ideally stitching together what are some limiting factors, what, what are some threats that affect populations and is that affecting different populations differently? Data collected will provide valuable information on habitats these birds are using. Long-billed curlews are only here for a couple months and then they migrate and then they're on the Texas coast or coastal states for, you know, seven, eight, nine months. So it's really important to learn more about, you know, are we all doing our part to make sure that this bird has safe places all along the way? This is Mike Anderson in the North Dakota Outdoors. So Mark, we, we learned all about this North Dakota project, but can you help us kind of understand the connection between North Dakota and Oklahoma for, for this? Okay, well, uh, Oklahoma and North Dakota share the same population of long-billed curlews. There's about okay. 85,000 birds in the population. North Dakota's the north end of the nesting range. We're the south end of the nesting range. Okay. There's a few birds that nest on the west side of the Rocky Mountains, and those birds go to the Pacific Coast. But our birds are central flyway birds that uh, spend the summer in the high plains. Okay. Uh, and then in the wintertime, some of the birds go to the grasslands in northern Mexico. Uh, other birds go to the Gulf Coast from Texas all the way to Florida. And that's what we saw with, with these tagged birds from North Dakota, right? Yes, that was one of the fascinating things about this is that you can follow those, those pathways and you can see that some birds are coming through the main body of Oklahoma to get to the Gulf Coast. Other birds are going through the Oklahoma Panhandle and those are going down to Mexico wow. for the winter. Uh, here in Oklahoma, we only have 100 to 150 pairs of long-billed curlews, so they're very rare in our state. Uh, we only have them nesting in the western half of the panhandle in the short grass prairie region. Sometimes they'll nest in winter wheat fields as well. Okay. Uh, but we have only a narrow window of time to see them. And that's another cool thing from this North Dakota study is that these birds are moving south much earlier than we expect them to because they're, as you mentioned, they're moving south in June. Wow. But a lot of our birds are still nesting. Uh, so so they're, they're coming in to Oklahoma at the beginning, or the, the beginning of April, uh, and in three months' time, they're moving back south. That's, that's pretty incredible to, to even think about. And, and these birds that, that came in from North Dakota, they crossed Oklahoma and they didn't even stop in the state, right? So it was a complete flight o across the state. Yeah, that's one of the incredible things about it. We're learning more and more with this kind of technology about the flights that shorebirds are making. There's a lot of birds that make these incredible flights where they just fly two or three days nonstop from the Gulf of Mexico to the middle of Nebraska or the northern part of North Dakota. Wow. It's, a, it's a pretty amazing that we can get all of this information from, from one study um, up in North Dakota. Yeah, it is. It is very incredible. And it, and it helps us because it's such a rare bird here. And it's, and it's in a remote part of our state. It's difficult to study. So we can get some insights into our birds by seeing what, 
what's happening in North Dakota. Great. Well, thank you, Mark. Oh, well, thank you. If you see a long-billed curlew or other migratory bird species, feel free to snap a picture and share it on social apps like iNaturalist or eBird, or you can also share it at wildlifedepartment.com.